Hello, everybody. Oops. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the second day of uh, the Spring Blog Festival. We're nearing the end of the day. We have two more sessions. And hello, Linda. Good to see you. Welcome. I hope we can hear you too. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, is it? Your camera is getting echo? I don't hear any echoes. Oh, are you using some? Oh, are you on an i? You said iPad. Okay. All right. I, I should be stopping very soon. I just want to introduce you as someone that is very passionate about uh, blogging, and we're looking forward to uh, hearing you. And I'm going to. Oh, I heard the echo. I hear the echo now from yours. Yes, Linda. I hear the echo. Yeah. So I'll. I'll just. Uh, it's okay. Uh, you can continue speaking. I'll um, I'll let you. Wait, is this is that the first slide? No, that's not the first one. Let's. I'll just take you to the first one, and then uh, if you need any help, I'm right here. Okay, Linda. Thank you for joining us, everyone. If you can add the chat box where you're from, and anything else you'd like, and I'll keep a watch on the chat box, Linda, for you, and. Uh, if you need me, I'm here. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay, Nellie, and you have the video queued up to start? Yes, we're all to remove myself so we won't they won't have to see me, just you. Okay, and Nellie, you do have the video um, that's gonna start in about that video that I sent you, I just want to make sure that you would start that video. Um, I don't see a video. Uh, do you have the? Oh, you mean the video that you had sent? Okay, there I am. Ah, uh, you sent one to me, right? It should be here. Do you, do you remember what it's called? Sorry. Who can it no? No, I don't. I don't see it here in the list. Uh, is it a YouTube video or an MP4? It's an MP4. I think I shared it I in class. Yeah, yeah. Echo. I just remembered. It could be still here. Let me just uh, get it from here. I don't see it in the um, in the list, but it should be here. I hear when I. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, that would be perfect. And I'll just add it because I don't, I don't see it here. I'm in a set. It's an MP5. Even though I do remember, uh, it was a while back. Let me. Uh, no. Oh, there it is. I see it. How to write a quality? Uh, yeah, we're is that it? Echo. I think it is. Okay. Oh, part. No, I'm not going to start it now. I'm just going to add it to the class. No problem. I'm just going to add it. Um, Okay, sorry. Uh, so it's just, it's there. It's ready. Okay, so back. it's ready. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Okay. And I'm not a, a good multitasker, so I won't be able to even look at the chat. I'm just going to begin, and maybe you can let me know if there's any questions that I can answer at the end. So I'm going to start. Um, okay, Nelly, and you have the video and queued up to start. Okay, and Nelly, you do have the video um, that's going to start in about that video that I sent you. I just want to make sure that you would start that video. Um, excuse me, can I ask you something? Are you using an iPad and something else or just an iPad? I'm on my computer. Oh, so that, uh, but do you have your iPad on as well? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. No, we don't hear an echo. I'm sorry that you hear one, but we don't. No. That's okay, I'll just keep going. All right. Okay. It is. It's a YouTube video. Just to tell you a little bit about myself, I've been an elementary school teacher for 27 years, and I enjoy it more each and every day. I'm a Google certified teacher. Okay, well, I'll get started. You want me to drop a link in the chat? Uh, blog a couple of times, and we've also won Best uh, Elementary Project. 
Okay. I'm very proud of that. That should do it. But we're, do you have a way that chronicles what I have been yes. doing as a Yes, but don't start it now. If you Google YOLA, educational blogging, you'll have a link to that. And to tell you a little bit about my classroom, I started in 2008, and I had basically All right. a computer. That was it. And I'm going to go ahead and start. And I'm not a, a good multitasker, so I won't be able to even look at the chat. I'm just going to begin, and maybe you can let me know if there's any questions that I can answer at the end. So I'm going to start. Uh, my name is Linda Yolis, and as you see at the bottom, it says Linda Yolis. That's my Twitter handle. And if you get in contact with me, you can use that. I do hear some feedback. Can you can you let me know in the chat if you're able to hear me, or are you getting an echo? Okay. So it's just my echo. Okay. I'm on my computer, and I've got my headset plugged in. No. And there are a lot of blogging options for teachers these days. I can recommend EduBlog is a great. That's okay. I'll just keep going. And support that goes along with it. I use All right. Blogger. My school is a Google app. And to advance the slide. There we go. Just to tell you a little bit about myself, I've been an elementary school teacher for 27 years, and I enjoy it more each and every day. I'm a Google certified teacher, and my class blogs have won EduBlog's Best Class Blog a couple of times, and we've also won Best uh, Elementary Project in Los Angeles County a couple of times. I'm very proud of that. I do have a way that chronicles what I have been doing as a blogger since 2008. And if you Google YOLAS, educational blogging, you'll have a link to that. And to tell you a little bit about my classroom, I started in 2008 and I had basically one computer. That was it. And a whole lot of enthusiasm. Uh, I now have five laptops and five iPads. We have a digital camera, although we use the iPads quite a bit for um, shooting pictures and going on um, Twitter and things like that. We do go to the computer lab every other week, and we blog when we're in there, uh, as well as blogging in the classroom every day. As you can see in that picture, the kids um, are using AlphaSmart computers. They're, they're, we only use them to teach typing because I think it's really important that kids have the ability to keyboard. If you can type, you can blog. And most of the people in my community uh, have access to computers at home. The kids love writing back and forth to one another in the comments section. It's a great way to develop a digital footprint for these kids. And there are a lot of blogging options for teachers these days. I can recommend EduBlog is a great platform. They have a lot of technical support that goes along with it. I use Blogger. My school is a Google Apps school, so I use that. I've also heard a lot of great things about Kids Blog, although I haven't used it myself. Um, and teachers have a lot of options about how they want to blog. You know, it can be um, they can report about what happened during the day. You can have a student scribe. You can have individual student blogs where all the students have one. I don't do that myself. I have kids earn their own blogs through participation on the classroom blogs, but that's an, an option for teachers. And you can also um, assign, you can grade the posts and comments. I do not. It's a way for us to practice and promote quality writing, but I don't practice, uh, I don't grade any of it. Occasionally I do assign a comment and they'll have a week to do it. Okay. I also really recommend that you have the comment moderation on 
because I want to always be in control of what is being published on the blog. So moderation is key. The um, primary reason that I blog is to strengthen literacy. It really um, is a great way to practice and promote quality writing. And we use it as part of our daily literacy practice in the classroom. You can see I have them paired up. My students are in third grade, although last year I had second graders as well. But I find that they do pretty well together if you pair them up. I've also noticed that there's a lot of other benefits besides my primary purpose of the, um, the writing. It definitely builds community. Um, you, the kids love writing back and forth to one another in the comment section. It's a great way to develop um, a digital footprint for these kids. You know, you hear so much about people uh, trying to clean up their digital footprint because they didn't realize that it was permanent. So starting with young kids and teaching them how to build their own personal digital footprint is very important. Uh, with a blog, you get to practice online safety all the time because you are um, talking about limiting personal information, not putting your last names in posts, not saying where you're going. Um, and it's also, there's a lot of things that are happening with um, just learning technology as you go. Kids will learn shortcuts, they will learn uh, how to try different technological things, and they are sharing with one another. Sorry about the phone. Uh, blogging also raises a lot of global understanding and interest in geography because your blogging buddies are um, from all over the world and they're, they want to see where their friends are from. And blogging also really provides for differentiation. I'm going to be sharing a lot of different uh, posts today or comments and you're going to see the variety of comments that kids pick and especially I find that gifted kids can really um, enjoy blogging. And uh, the United States is moving toward the Common Core state standards and this is a matrix, I know it's small to read, but it's from my friend Joe Wood and if you'd like to follow him on Twitter, he is UCD Joe and he publishes a lot about digital writing and if you can see under kindergarten, the Common Core standard is asking for kids to produce and publish online and collaborate with others starting in kindergarten. So blogging is going to be a great forum for teachers to try and meet that Common Core standard. I'm going to be talking a lot about how to integrate curriculum and how I encourage interaction in the comment section. I really find that that's where the blog comes to life. And if you have any ideas as we are um, talking, drop them in the chat or put them out on Twitter. I know they're using the hashtag um, Spring Blog Fest. So if you come up with some ideas of your own, please share them. Then we can all learn together. A big part about blogging is having an audience. And this is a picture of our cluster map, which is a gadget in our sidebar. Each red dot is a visitor. And the red dots have a real impact on my students. They realize that they have an audience and they really want to raise their level of what they're publishing because they have readership. It's very motivating for kids. And it could be parents could be teachers, could be students, but audience is, is very motivating. And I'm sure you know, but I just wanted to review that a blog is a mixture of the words web and log, and it's an online journal that's published in chronological order. And you have your posts, you have the comment section, which accompanies each post, and the sidebar, which you can have all of your comments in, or, uh, your gadgets in. I'm going to be focusing today on the comment section because that is really where the blog comes to life and I'm going to show you what I mean by that. <clears throat> this is a screenshot of my class blog. This is Yolis' classroom blog 
And this is the place where I teach about the foundations of blogging, what the different parts are, and I teach from this one. However, I also have a photo of the day blog. And this is one I started about four years ago. And we publish a photo of the day with some accompanying text. And this has become a global collaborative kind of project where people and friends from all over the world classes have been contributing photos and text. Let's do that now. And as you can um, see, I think there's you might something want for everyone. To, uh, it's a great jumping maybe, off point for, um, for Mute your um, mic. Do you know how to do that, Linda? Writing. Click on the icon on the mic just for now. Um, I start blogging with my class before school even so begins. And what I mean echo, by I'm that is the, same thing. the day right, before so start. school starts, I create a YouTube Perfect. video where I introduce myself in the blog. I email a link to all the parents and my new students. And I really feel like you will never have everybody's attention like you will with um, on the very first day of school. So I I introduce myself, I invite kids to leave a comment with a parent supervision, and it's a great way to really showcase how important the class blog is going to be. One of the things I notice right away is that the kids don't know how to comment. You know, they'll do a lot of, hey, blogging rocks, hey, you rock, Mrs. Yolis, with a thousand exclamation marks. And although I love that, that they have that thought, it really wasn't the, the content I was really looking for. So I found that I had to teach directed lessons about how to comment. So as you can see on here, the kids said that, you know, when you comment, you should definitely have capital letters, you should punctuate at the end, you should have correct spelling. We do do a greeting and a closing of each one, just so it's a standard for third grade and so kids can follow the uh, thread of the comment, but I only had to introduce content. What do you write? How do you interact with other people uh, in the comment section? So I teach them about how to do it, and then I use a video that my students made to teach it. And Nellie, this is where we can show that video. It's a video my students made, and they're going to teach us how to write a quality comment. Mrs. Yolis from California. Panda and I are here to talk about commenting. You know, the comment section is my favorite part of the blog. That's where people can respond to what you've written. You can write back to them. You can get some great conversations going in the comment section. So, let's talk about what makes for a good comment. My students have some excellent tips for you. I like your shirt. Thank you. You're welcome. We're talking about complimenting. Whenever you leave a comment, it's always nice to open with a specific compliment. If you like the bloggers right, tell them. If the bloggers need to navigate, compliment them. Be positive and be specific. It's always good to add factual information to your comment. For example, if someone's writing about the Statue of Liberty and you've seen it or read about the Statue of Liberty, go ahead and write some new factual information. How old is it? How tall is it? Be sure to look at the comment section to make sure no one has written what you want to say. And if no one has, go ahead and write it. Have fun adding factual information to your comment. To make a comment better, it is nice to have a connection with the writer. Connections remind people of things. 
For example, let's say your friend published a post about their camping trip, and it reminded you of hiking at Big Bear. Then you might want to share some facts about your trip. That is how you make connections with the writer. It's always a good thing to ask relevant questions at the end of your comments. Try to get a conversation going. Exactly. For example, if someone posts something about ladybugs, and you are wondering something about their lifespan or the colors that they come in, then you should. Oh, ask. Linda, you must be. Hopefully, the blog. Oh, that the was amazing! Amazing! I'm clapping. For that example, was amazing. Thank you. Thank example, you so much for sharing. I loved it. I got it. a little conversation going in, in one of the posts called Fabulous Fall. Um, we talked about the trees, and I asked her how many, how many trees she has in her backyard. She responded, and I'm really happy I got the answer. Um, it's always a good thing to get a little conversation going at the end. If you get a conversation going, then drop by and leave us a comment. We'd love to hear about it and learn about it. See you later. Bye. Honest discussion about the comment. The last step for leaving quality comments is to prove it. And you can see they are here giving is going to teach us some tips about proof. They're very honest about it. What's that? Panda? Panda? Say, well, this is a one yeah, point I will. because Panda says really that always at the beginning of your sentence, you use capital letters, and at the end, you use punctuation. What else, Panda? Wow, that's a sure. pointer, you know, that a compound always pointer, use only one exclamation mark. Included, uh, and if you want to really uh, show your excitement, use more words. This Not exclamation marks. Finally, he says if you use the pronoun I, always I capitalize always it. Ways to incorporate Panda and I wish you happy blogging. Wow, those were some great tips. Thanks, Panda. So, now that we know how to write a great comment, let's get out there and leave some quality comments for our blogger friends. Good luck, everybody. Make a little video for them. I find that a lot of parents don't know how to participate in the blog, so having a how to video for them, walking them through the steps, or walking grandparents through the steps, they help. And I run what I call a family blogging month two times a year. And although I see Sue Wyatt's in the audience too, she's the reason I made that when I was working uh, to help with the student blogging challenge. So um, as I said, I taught a few lessons, and then the students wrote, practiced, and produced that film themselves. So after they've been teaching about how to how to comment, then we start the next step, which is the evaluation process. So if a student has left a comment during um, you know during class or from homework or from their home, the next day we will have the child read it and we'll have a very honest discussion about the comment and the kids will rate it. They will say, is this a point or a two point comment? And you can see they are giving their evaluation and the comments, they're very honest about it. Someone will say, well, this is a one point comment because they really, they don't have any spelling errors or any grammatical errors, but they haven't really contributed anything. They haven't the sentences are kind of simple and then we'll read another one and the students will say wow that's a two-pointer you know we've got a compound sentence they added relevant information they included a uh, new uh, factual information so this sort of dialogue informal dialogue at the beginning of the year really helps elevate the comments I do a lot of what I would call. I um, always look for ways to incorporate parents. They are really the key to a lot of the success in, in all learning, really. But I look for ways to include parents. For example, I ask for them to become virtual volunteers and help me with the commenting. Um, I recommend that you have a way for them to subscribe to your blog via email.
I did make a little video for them. I find that a lot of parents don't know how to participate in a blog, so having a how-to video for them, walking them through the steps, or walking grandparents through the steps really helps. And I run what I call a family blogging month two times a year. And although I invite parents to participate in the learning, a lot of times they don't. And I found that if we dedicate a whole month to family blogging month and we keep track of who's leaving comments and it's kind of a little bit of a contest, and the winners, of course, win a free post on Mrs. Yolis's classroom blog and a free kids' lunch from a local restaurant but it's a great way to really bring in those family members the grandparents are great contributors as well and we run that about twice a year <clears throat> and now I'm going to talk about how I integrate curriculum and encourage student interaction in the comment section and if you think of any ideas as we go as I said Adam on Twitter or Adam in the chat here this is an example of tapping into kids and Halloween. You know, they all have a costume that they're going to be preparing. So I have them, if they wanted to, they could create a photo in their costume that would be a great contribution to the internet. You don't want to reveal too much personal information, yet you want your pictures to tell a story. So here's an example of one of my students, and she's created a great image here. She's not revealing her face. We can tell that she's a witch, and she's written some great content to match her picture. I do a lot of what I would call um, lessons with, within the blog. Like this would be a post teaching about compound sentence, something I would have taught in class. So it defines what a compound sentence is. And anybody, parents, students, can come to this post and review what a compound sentence is. And I always tie it to something that's happening in the news, like the Olympics. So in the comment section, there was a lot of interaction with kids practice, practicing writing compound sentences, but sharing what was happening with the Olympics. I'm a boa constrictor. Here's a different example. We do a reading unit on traditions. And so I wrote a post about traditions and define what a, a tradition is. It could be an annual party, a holiday, any traditional event. And I recommend that they include details like foods, decorations, and the kids had one week to contribute a comment about a family celebration, a family tradition that they have. And here is my own comment, because I really feel like if you're asking people to comment, adults and kids, that you should be modeling it too. And I think it's good for my students to see that adults and teachers are writers as well. So I won't read this all one to you, but I, this was my family tradition. A family tradition that I thoroughly enjoy when I was growing up was our annual trip to Pelican Lake, Minnesota. When school got out in June, my mother would pile my two siblings into our 1968 Chevy Bel Air wagon, and we endured the long 1,800-month journey from, from California. So they're seeing a great model piece. Parents are seeing what kind of examples I want, and I'm contributing. This was another language arts lesson that I did, and we read the book The Great K-Pop Tree, and the setting takes place in the rainforest. So I had students select one of the rainforest animals that they wanted to learn more about, and I taught them how to research online and how to gather facts. And the next step was they would take the facts that they learned, create a comment as if they were that animal, and then make that their comment. And the focus was teaching children how to research without plagiarizing, because a lot of them just want to copy and paste. So this was an exercise in that. And here's an example. This was one we did together. I gathered everybody up on the carpet in the front. We wrote this together. So, dear Mrs. Yolis's class, I'm a boa constrictor who lives in Brazil. I'm just lazing around here because I recently devoured a guinea pig. Now I am inactive, so I have time to comment on your blog. Uh, now that I've eaten, I won't need to eat again for many months. So it's a sample, sort of setting the standard of what we want. 
you can see we HTML the facts there in bold, and then there's voice. There's a little bit of play along with it. But again, there's our first comment, so it sets in the 21st century. It sets the the standard. Now here's a typical example. Dear Mrs. Yellows, I am a pink. I am pink and swim in the Amazon River. I have a bump on my back instead of a dorsal fin. A great contribution from one of my students. And here's what I'm talking about when I say differentiation. Here's a comment from a student who is a gifted writer. And she, with the same assignment, came up with, Squawk, walk. excuse me, allow me to introduce myself. I am Tilly the Talented Toucan. My toucan buddies and I live in the tropical and subtropical rainforests of Central and South America. I am a super colorful, and very ordinary bird with a gigantic, maybe I'm exaggerating too much, bill. Again, she's used HTML to bold her facts, but she's also introduced onomatopoeia. She's got alliteration in there. It gives a chance for the full spectrum of ability, and they can all learn together. Who contributed these types of word problems? And then this is another example of that same type of blog post. This was a biography that I did, and I typically would have this be a paper and pencil book report, but I modified it to make it a um, a blog post where we could have some interaction in the comment section. So after reading about your biography, please leave a comment as if you are that person. And again, it was a great opportunity to uh, practice how to research and publish without plagiarizing. There was a lot of creativity. I invited family members to pick a different person and drop a comment in as them. Here is a typical one that I got for third grade. And he says, I am Amelia Earhart. I was born in Atchison, Kansas on July 24th, 1897. Very straightforward, met the criteria. Here's another example of someone else. I mean, this is, again, a gifted student who I am Leonardo da Vinci. Although I lived in the 1400, it's my pleasure to visit your wonderful, magnificent blog in the 21st century. And I mean, it's just amazing. But as you read through the comments sections, you'd have da Vinci talking to Tchaikovsky. You'd have Thomas Jefferson talking to Abraham Lincoln. So there was this whole other level where the people came alive in the blog comment section, which I love. Or four I give a couple of math examples right now, and this is this was a math one. It was a new kind of math problem that my third graders were introduced to, and it said, uh, "Here's an example: Panda and Hoppy left 25 comments. Hoppy left five more comments than Panda. How many comments did to leave? How many comments did Hoppy?" We did a lot of practice in class with this type of problem. We even started writing some of them ourselves. And I told the kids, if you want to go home and with your parent supervision, you can write your own word problem. We'll use it the next day. And sure enough, I got about a dozen kids who contributed these types of word problems. And the next day, we were able to use them in, in class. So here's Royce, who's experimenting with HTML to get different shapes as well. But he wrote one about the Statue of Liberty in Mount Rushmore having 728 visitors in total. Statue of Liberty has 124 more visitors. How many visitors does the Statue of Liberty have versus Mount Rushmore? So the kids wrote the content for us to practice a skill. It's writing, it's social studies, it's their own personal interests, and we don't have to use the text. It comes from the students. And this was the study. That gadget that I was showing you keeps track of our visitors. Sometimes the visitor number is an interesting number. This particular day we had a palindrome, so I did it. We set up a quick photo, put it on the blog, and kids on their own started writing word palindromes like Madame or Nurses Run in the comment section. So they had fun creating and discovering palindromes. Again, I didn't assign it. It was just an event that happened. You put it on the blog, and they're interested. This is one of my favorite examples. This comes from my second graders last year, and it was they were learning about reasonable estimates. And in their textbook, it said, 
if a student went to the library, is it more likely she checked out 40 books or four books? So we quickly set up a photo. You can see you, there, we're not revealing faces. There's no personal information revealed. It's about making a judgment and looking at what makes sense. I published it with no assignment, just published it. Here's what happened. First day, here comes Colin. Dear Mrs. Yolis, I bet the second graders had a great time estimating numbers. I accept your challenge. If I was in the library, I would not have checked out 40. I would have checked out four. And now he makes one up. Can anyone tell me the reasonable answer to this question? If I was a basketball player, would it make sense for me to make 100 shots or 20 shots? Here comes a second grader responding. I accept your challenge. I think the reasonable answer is 20 shots because it would be very hard to get 100 shots in a game. It would be hard to get 100 shots because it's hard to get the ball 100 times. I mean, great logic, great thinking, reading, writing, math. There are like 37 comments right now on this one. Kids just making up problems for one another. That's the beauty of blogging. I taught the kids how to use having a, <clears throat> excuse me, having a class blog allows a place for you to embed different web 2.0 tools. Like this is an interactive quiz that I would embed on the blog. And this was to study um, the three branches of government. We also were learning in geometry about the difference between circles and spheres. And the kids took these pictures. We added it to that photo peach tool. And then you have an interactive quiz right on the blog and they can add comments if they like. This is a recent one that just came up. You know, we were learning about Vokies and so we wrote a paragraph about President's Day, which is celebrated in America. And we made two Vokies, one from George Washington and one from Abraham Lincoln and wrote a, we said a paragraph about it. And that got us talking about presidents in general, not just these two that America celebrates. And the kids got all excited about all the different presidents and they decided to pick presidents that they wanted to be and leave comments as if they were that president. So here's Shana and she says, it's your old friend James Buchanan. And notice she put a pronunciation key in there for people. I'm not going to read it. If you want to pause it and, and look at it later, you can. But here's another one from Franklin Pierce. And it's all generated from student interest. They get excited. They feed off each other on ideas. And I mean, they're practicing writing. They're learning. They're, it, 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 it's magic, is what I say. Um, this is something that occurred this year. Like I say, I often play off of what's going on in the classroom. And we got a new student who didn't speak very much English. His name was Theo, and he came from France. And we were all trying to get to know him. So we, I took a picture of some of the welcome posters that the kids had made. And then we did a post about Theo, not using his face, but as a group photo. And I taught the kids how to use Google Translate. And in the comments section, with their parents' help, kids were generating posts or uh, comments to Theo to welcome him. So it says here, dear Theo, I'm very excited that you joined our class. So how do you like it so far? You are very good at basketball. I had a lot of fun playing with you. Your English is very good. Did you study it in France? You are a thing to English very well. And there's Google Translation. And Google Translate isn't always perfect, but I've had uh, a couple people who spoke French look at it and say it was pretty good. And Theo was able to comment back and, and make these kinds of connections and interactions in the comment section. And here he commented back to Peter. So thank you for your comment on the blog. I have fun with you too. Tomorrow we play basketball. Goodbye, Theo. So great interaction. This is an example of a child taking something that we learn in the computer lab, making their own, and having opportunities to publish. Our computer teacher, in celebration of Dr. Seuss's birthday, taught the kids how a directed draw on Wixie. And they all drew Horton from Horton Here's a Who. I published it on the blog, and everyone got to look at it. And then one of my students went home, signed into Wixie, created her Lorax picture, wrote some text as if she she was the Lorax, 
told us the Lorax, told us about the Lorax's favorite character, and submitted it to me for our 365 blog. Here's a place for her to showcase what she's doing, and I've had three other kids follow her lead. From your French student. And you can tell we are getting a lot. And finally, I want to, I, I think Catherine is, is in here. I don't know. I haven't been following along, but it, you can mix platforms. This is a, an example of using Twitter buddies and blogging buddies together and putting it through the web. Um, Catherine Monahan thought of this idea where the kids would tweet to one another a new word a day. So we, for 26 days, each of us contributed an interesting word through Twitter and gave some context, gave the part of speech. And so we learned new words for about, you know, like I said, 26 days. And then we gathered them all up and created a Google presentation, which we published on And so here's an example of G. G is for genre. You could see it's got noun, parts of speech. You see she's got a pronunciation key and what it is. And she chose to shoot a picture of it, but kids also drew their own artwork, did any kind of um, any kind of illustration that they thought helped teach the word. And then I extended it in the comment section, as I, all, I often do. I said, OK, in the comment section, you have till Friday to contribute a new word that wasn't in our vocabulary A to Z project. And so here's an example from one of my students. My word, first word is attire, using HTML to bold the word. They dressed in their finest attire when they attended the president's party at the White House. My second word is multitude. I learned a multitude of phenomenal words from the A to Z project. So not only do we have the Google presentation documenting the project, but here it lives on in the comment section. And look who else is here. Here's Theo, our new learner. He left a comment as a novice in an American school. At the beginning, I was intrigued with the blog. Then I was keen on reading more. And now I'm amazed by the way we learn here from your French student. And you can tell we are getting a lot of parent support from this, as I say, is a big part of um, what I want with blocking that parent piece. As I said, I rarely assign comments. A, a few times a year I do, and the kids have one week to complete it. If they're having problems with their computer, they can always paper pencil their comment out, and they can write it at school, or I will take it as paper pencil. And I like to include a lot of choice, as you can see. I like to see what interests kids. In, at my school, we do grammar worksheets every day. And I don't think they're that valuable, but I have to do them. So what I've done is started to open it up a little bit. And I call it Tech Tuesday and Webby Wednesday. And the kids can choose to either do the grammar worksheet or come up with something, some way to apply whatever language skill we're working on. Like that Lorax was an example of someone who, instead of doing the grammar, wrote that paragraph about it. It's so much more authentic. It's so much more valuable than any worksheet could ever be. So I'm looking to kind of move away completely from worksheets for grammar and really move into something more authentic that's more student-driven and tapping into them. So to finalize, I just want to say that, um, you know, I've been blogging since 2008. And um, the comments come and go. The posts come and go. There's an ebb and a flow to it. You're, you know, sometimes you get a lot of interaction. Sometimes you don't. My best tip to you is to partner up with someone. Find someone we are who's also so interested impressed. in blogging. And um, work together. You're doing amazing things. Um, you just opened my eyes. I, I had the feeling that um, you know the things weren't and then the done, other just and the and teachers it on, were and we uh, not using so we technology. They're just busy with we exams and and content. And here we are. So this has been amazing. There's a question there by Sarah, who's asking, who's asking, what do you do if the grammar is incorrect, etc. On yourself. the blog, you know, do you um, comment? You got to know what your limitations are, what you want to do, 
but set a goal for like a post a week you know, told you, and start just start in. Blog. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have the greatest blog. Just begin your journey. Just start. I reuse a lot of successful posts. Like that traditions post is something that comes up every year when we are, you know, reading that, that when we come to that unit. So I just copy and reuse the post, but the comments are all different because I have different students. I really recommend that you join Twitter. Twitter is a remarkable way to connect with other educators, share your ideas, learn from other people. William Chamberlain invented the comments for kids hashtag, which I use when I'm going to be publishing either a post for my class or one of my student blogs. Um, comments for kids hashtag will connect you with other blogging teachers. They will leave comments possibly. Their students will leave comments. And definitely look for ways to adapt projects, book reports, Things that you have done for maybe a couple of years, look for ways to adapt them and make them a blog post. Make them more interactive. Bring them to life. Um, look for those kinds of ways to adapt your current curriculum and make it more interactive. So I see we have about 10 minutes left. If I'd be happy to answer any questions or follow up. You become a better writer yourself. So, although there are mistakes occasionally, we really make an effort to make it the best we can. Thank you. There was another question about if you can repeat uh, the quality of a comment. I think um, um, someone asked that. Melanie, could you repeat? Yeah, what makes? For, yeah, she says. Could you repeat the quality comment oh, aspect? Yeah, there. what as what what do you require of your students, the kids? <laughs> They're not students. Well, there's two different parts to a to a comment, and if you um, well, it's funny because if you, if you, you know, as I told you, when we start the year off, we talk about what makes for quality writing, and they say you got to capitalize, you got to punctuate, and all that. And they and the kids have a really high standard. They say you should never publish anything that has errors. And I tell the kids, you know, people are human. If if you start rejecting people because of a, a few common errors here and there, no one's going to want to comment because there's too high of a barrier. But having said that, we also do set a very high standard. And when the kids are paired up like you saw them, they'll write a comment together and they help each other. They proofread it. And then when they're ready for me to look it over, because nobody just publishes, both of them put their hands up, and that's a signal to me that they're ready for me to look at it, or if I have help in the classroom for some an adult to look. If I don't have time to look at it right then, they open up a new tab and just leave it, and I will get to it. Otherwise, kids, a lot what is the link to that? Is it, did you add it in the chat box? On their own. It's amazing. And, but they must have parents who. Oh, I've got Sue has. Sue just added it. Thank you, Sue. No Thank you. She's an amazing, comment, an amazing human it, being. The there, there. Okay, really excellent. Yeah, it's, um, it's on correct. The blog, number one. That's great. And I also want them practicing. I really believe that if you practice quality writing, oh, there's a comment here. I love how you break it down for them. Easier for students to understand and take it in. You become a better writer yourself. So. Although and yeah, there there's, are mistakes thank you, Sue. occasionally, there's the, uh, the wiki we spaces. really make an effort to make it the best we can. I just find that, you know, I'm always looking for ways to get kids to practice writing. And I find that classroom blogging is magical. They want to consider it. As long as you... Um, what makes for a like comment? It's up to the individual teacher what they want to do, but I rarely... I rarely require people to, to comment. I try to feel well. There's, what there's two different parts to a to a comment, and if you um, if you type in if you if you search Yolas educational blogging, I have a whole post about how I go about and I teach commenting. But I will <laughs> say, the comment is two part. Yeah. There is. The, the words that you've chosen and the spelling and the grammar and all that, and then there's the content, and both of them are important with a comment. You want to make sure that you're expressing yourself so people are understanding, but you also want to contribute something. If everybody says the same thing, the comment section is very dull and repetitive. I'm encouraging kids to read the comments. 
Good point. There's a uh, question here in comment add by Catherine. She is here. She says, how do you get parents to write comments? Uh, parents in add our school that feel read from intimidated comment that by the level of literacy required and won't my, comment my in case they make wiki, spelling errors. I, I chronicle Yet, how I, I learned I don't to want to take away comment and, and some rules. Of the steps I've taken. Yeah, and I understand that too. I have I have some parents in my class that are, I didn't uh, English as a second language, and and yes. I'm Yay, so. I don't, I'm afraid that my the English is community is very and supportive. They send me theirs, and I will help them with it. I'm there to help everybody. And, Thank you. And I encourage them. It doesn't have to be a long comment. It can be a short comment. Um, but join. It's it's a it's a learning community, and if a parent shows interest in something, the kids are going to show interest. At least at the elementary level, that's been my experience. They uh -huh. dream when they get to read. I just find that you know I'm always looking for ways to and get kids to practice classes, writing, and I find that classroom blogging is magical. They want to contribute as long as you. Um, like I said, it's up to the individual yeah. teacher what they want to do, True. but I rarely, I rarely require people I really, to, to I, comment. I, I try to feed off what the kids are interested in and, and follow their lead. And I, told them, I am enthusiastic know, about blogging. Know, I demonstrate that enthusiasm, and I think that sets the stage for it as well. Um, so if you're excited, she says, Catherine excited. says, thanks. Uh, we sometimes find it difficult in. to engage with the parents, but the school in. is becoming it, more supportive of the really, concept of blogging, and I'm hoping we can move really forward with this. With All right, so as I understand it, uh, Sue is going to be talking um, in the next session about how to get teachers. How uh, so this is a I great mean, follow up to your post, session. I didn't get any comments from anybody, and it went like that for a long time. So don't get discouraged. That's amazing. And so we're going to learn from Sue. Sue's here. And Sue, do you want to try your mic out uh, it's, it's a chance to try it out so that I don't have to be stressed and neither do you but I think <laughs> can I try it out yes okay so this is a yes cross your fingers what no no you're fine you're okay you're not echoing at all I don't know what happened at the beginning are uh, you crossing your fingers yeah and I understand that too so the, I have, oh it's just I have a, some parents ooh, in my class ooh. that are, the webcam uh, is not coming through so we know oh language. there we are and, Hello, Sue. And, and they've come to me and said, I am intimidated. I don't, I'm afraid that my English isn't correct. Um, and they send me no, there. No, no, and no you're talking. Great, it's working. I'm Thank you. So there's everybody. Sue. <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure you're in the garden, you're outside. Can I can hear the birds. Um, uh, that's that's lovely. It's, All right, so yes, Sue's uh, going to be in the next session. So it's good to have a promo of what we're going to have later on. Sue's an experienced blogger with with kids. And, and of course, I, I guess say, parents, don't leave the your whole last name, school. just say you're Johnny's mom or Susie's so, uh, mom. Because any questions we can or comments? Put the name together um, and have a full name. People are very impressed. And, like uh, and, and they kept saying it. You know, I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed. Together because and, and internet, and like someone this. commented that Look watching that. you beam when the kids, really, when you were I, watching I the video, I encourage uh, was them worth to become um, virtual volunteers. Quite a bit and I make myself still. available to them, and I told them, <laughs> thank if you, you need thank help, you, please, Linda. Let me know. And, Don't uh, let that stop you. Yes. I am enthusiastic, and I think that's a big ticket. I really recommend people watch Sue. I have participated in the student blog challenge many times. It's a great way to begin to blog. You learn a lot of technology and, and how to approach it. And it's also a great way to connect with other classrooms and make your classroom global. So definitely check out Sue. All right, so we're going to do that yes, right now. So uh, let's go over there. Uh, there, um, Linda, if you could, there's a link. Let me grab it. There's a, I think I grabbed it. There's a link that Tom has added. It's not active for some reason. Let's see if I can add it. Um, no, I didn't add it. Uh, let's try again. Uh, there's the link to continue the discussions. There we go. All right. So if you click on that, you'll be able, oh, you did, Tom. Thank you. Uh, you'll be able to go to the, um, course what's called a course feed and that's like a comment box 
or discussion forum, whatever you want to call it, where we'll be able to um, continue the discussions um, later. Um, hello there. Right Do I have to press any into, button to uh, talk? Sue, Sue um, left us. We're going into her session. So thank you, everybody. Thank oh. you, Linda. Join us. And uh, we'll see you in the next class in five minutes. Thank you. <laughs>